Greetings Gislavos! In this video we will quickly georeference an image based on a PDF. Uh, basically you cannot uh, georeference PDFs in uh, QGIS. That's why first we will convert this PDF into an image format. It doesn't uh, matter which, I will convert it to GPG in this case. Let's open this. Uh, always choose uh, media box. Let's rotate this. And now I will crop the image. It's low resolution, so it shouldn't be that big. And therefore the georeferencing process will be very easy. You can see when we zoom it's getting a little fuzzy. So let's save this. Water danger zones. Right. Load the image. Here it is. Choose the coordinate system. If you are not sure, you look at uh, the uh, bottom right corner and you see what uh, coordinate system the project is. And now the difficult question: we need some. Actually, we need some points. So, if we look at the roads, I will join the uh, based on the roads there. And uh, we are looking for signature points, like uh, where two roads intersect, like here, where a road uh, curves, like here, and uh, actually where the road. Uh, goes out of the village like here and I'm searching for just three points it's better four points in the four corners but uh, whenever it's not possible you just notice like here we have a road in the uh, not urban area it's uh, not significant road but uh, it shall be marked on my project so let's uh, actually turn on the roads layer it's uh, I am searching for the transport rail roads and uh, I will not uh, use the urban areas in this case so let's turn them off because it make it more difficult so you see this juncture here it's actually when the this is the road that uh, is uh, on the west side of the village and uh, it intersects with the main road here if we go to the map, you see the similar point. And I will precisely locate that point. So, because I will snap to the rows there mainly, I will need to snap to vertex and segment. Let's locate this. This is the rows there. And I will change it to vertex and segment. Pixels, because I will be zoomed out. And now, let's uh, mark this point. We have a point here, and from up canvas, I will choose this point. Next, we have, uh, as I mentioned, the curve of the rail here. It seems that this is the rail, and uh, this small road is not uh, present, it's actually this one. But let's use the curve of the rail. Ra rail Railways usually have uh, big curves and uh, big curve radiuses <clears throat> and uh, actually they are easy to locate at the endpoints. You notice the endpoint is around here and it coincides with the end of the curve here. This one. It's probably around here. Let's use this point here. And from map canvas, I will uh, actually I need to snap to the rails as well. So let's go to snapping options and uh, mark the rail layer. And again, vertex and segment will do the job. If the pixels is okay. And uh, you can see it snaps correctly. Now, 
this point I'm not so sure about that, but I will use it for now. This is absolutely clear where it is. And the rails intersect. And we have uh, the intersection of the rail and the road, which is also clear. The problem is that I need to snap exactly. Right. What else do we have? If uh, the map was slightly bigger extent, I would uh, see the, the point where these two connect. But in this case, I do not, so I will use only the curve point. You notice that it uh, ends like this and then goes up. I'm almost sure about all the curve points and uh, this one slightly let's let's uh, see on the zone slayer actually because I noticed some some significant uh, roads here which is this one and uh, if I go straight up from here it will yes mm, seems fine but I think that this distance from the straight segment to the curve is uh, more on the map which will be around here so if you want to move the point you just simply choose move also clear so every point is clear now we can go to the transformation settings I will choose I will choose uh, in place blind and uh, nearest neighbor you can go with nearest neighbor here as well or line here and uh, now we will save it as danger areas 2 and again you reference it now the final task is to actually mark this uh, blue zone by creating a new layer and then uh, going for the loading of the layer. So you go to layer, create new vector layer, not, not copying existing layers in this case. And uh, go to again project CRS and don't forget to choose the correct type when you referencing of course. ID is a generic attribute, I will use that and uh, also I will uh, use my favorite attribute type which is actually universal, I use it basically for every layer and um, um, what can we say, type and danger these are generic, I will change them if I need to. And here we will name it motor danger. Oh, actually, I will go blood blood areas. It knows. <laughs> you see, Kyugi's intuition is very good. It knows. It, I will choose blue layer, blue symbology. Um, it's luck. Uh, you you have to change it if you don't like the color. It chooses a random color. And now uh, we will turn off all snapping. We don't want snapping to roads. That is easily done. Leaving the the last raster, which is the best. And now I will turn this off. Turn the georeference off. I will not save the points. And start GeoFS, of course. Or actually, I will draw this based on the based on what I see. That's it. Let's call it uh, type uh, 
existing. I need one and danger. Low. Now, why don't we see something? Your guesses? <laughs> of course, two possible answers. The feature is uh, degenerated if you have uh, avoid intersections, which I don't. And the second is that there is placed very low. And you know the solution. Move it up. And I will add the transparency, of course. In this case, I will go for bigger transparency. And here is the moment to change the color of it and add some. Transparency. We can go with uh, transparency here, or we go with general transparency for the layer. I will choose transparency for the layer and change the symbology. I don't like this blue color. I will choose uh, something like uh, points. Point pattern fill, and uh, let's reduce the sizes and uh, one and the distances will be 5.5 and I will not use uh, boundary line or if I do I will use a blue boundary line this one like the points and uh, it will be dashed dashed and that's our first one. As I mentioned, I will copy the feature and paste it. Copy, paste, change its symbology to potential. Yes, and uh, let's uh, add categorized. based on type for potential I will use red and here I will choose this one and for the boundary again I will use the red one and for the other one I again will use the blue one I will hide the blue one and I will modify the red one by choosing the splitting tool. second one. That's it. We delete this one. And here I will create a new feature because it's very, very simple. I just use the existing points and I will call it... Uh, I forgot. <laughs> Yes, here it is. I, I'm looking at the screen. Yeah. And that's it. That's our float areas done. And I will draw actually the boundary as well. straight line. If not, I will just use the precise one. I prefer to simplify it. And 
here. Let's, let's use this box. And here I will call this uh, current boundary. Simply that. And uh, I will not uh, classify, but I will just add this and uh, specify line pattern. No, actually, not line pattern, but outline line. And uh, I will choose a bigger one and uh, use the dashed line with uh, 22. and uh, type the value I used and that will show it yes here it is and now we can of course see what we've done and turn on the blue one as well and uh, this is the map this is exactly how it should be and uh, we can of course add it to our layer combination here and uh, we save the changes to the layer save show this show this and uh, update and we can also show the other layer design and that's it that's the map i wanted to show you it's nicole from Alisa signing off and wishing you inspiration in your this practice. If you have further questions, post them below. I will answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to comment, like, and share the videos. And see you in the next video.